So this is the third and final portion of the shed build. It has been a really fun build. So far I've done the framing and the windows and doors. Uh, I still have to put the shingles on the roof and the cedar shake shingles on the siding. And that is a bit of a process, but it was a ton of fun. I kind of got addicted to working with cedar. I did most of it with hand tools and I also tried my hand at some patterns. It was really fun, so stick around. We're gonna start with the roof and pretty quickly move into the cedar shakes. skip ahead to where I start working on shake shingles, feel free, here's the time code right here. Uh, but for those of you who are invested in this uh, shed building project, I wanted to cover how I shingled the roof. So we're going a little bit back in time here because I actually installed this drip edge and the, the roof shingles before I did the window and door. But in the last video, it just didn't make sense to include it. Uh, this is a pretty simple process. I installed the drip edge on the front first and I gave it a little bit of a gap off the fascia. And then I could install some, some felt paper over the top of that as a moisture barrier. Once the felt paper is laid out, I can go over the sides and the top and, and add some more drip edge. And then I can start laying out lines for the roof shingles. Depending on the type of shingle that you're using, it's gonna have different instructions uh, about the offsets and uh, how to lay out your courses. I just read the instructions on the back, honestly. That's, that's how I uh, figured out what I needed to do. And it's pretty straightforward. This bag is uh, architectural shingles. They are, I think, five inch reveal and a six inch offset, something like that. Um, so I, I just put on a, a regular straight up course across the front of it, and then I double stacked that course, uh, which again was, was told to me in the instructions. So you put a second layer over the top of that, which is slightly offset by that six inches, and each course up from there is another six inch offset. So that way your seams on your shingles don't, don't line up underneath each other. really loved this excuse to be outside in the fall weather in Seattle. It was so nice. It was such a nice day. Uh, I managed to get this done in a couple hours and it was just really relaxing to kind of shut my brain off and, and just go through the process of laying out all these shingles. And I managed to get it done in just a minute of time. We started getting rain pretty quickly after that and I've been fighting the rain pretty much for the last few weeks trying to get the cedar shake shingles done. So as I mentioned in the intro that this is my first time doing cedar shakes and it was a big learning curve, uh, but a super fun one. I kind of I kind of watched a couple videos and I, I learned quite a bit, um, but I definitely there's definitely a skill level or a, a hand-eye coordination thing that's, that starts to gel after a while. So you see me kind of kind of struggle a little bit early on. Um, the corners are not quite as tight as they end up being towards the end, uh, but that's all part of the process. I, I really wanted this shed to be a learning process. I'm learning how to frame, I'm learning how to roof, I'm learning some structural stuff, and I'm learning how to do some siding. I learned very quickly that I uh, made it really hard on myself. This The structure, all the framing elements that are in the way, uh, how many corners there are on this building, and I decided to do something called weaving the corners, where you overlay a shingle over the top of the next shingle, and then you, you carve it back. Um, this is the way that it is on my 1940s house. I really like the look of it. The other option is to put a piece of trim on the corners um, and then shingle in between the trim. It's way easier to do it that way, but I, I I wanted the challenge and it was, it was definitely a challenge, but I got really good at it by the, by the end of this process. 
Ashley came outside and helped uh, for a couple days here and there when she could spare the time. And uh, it was really nice to have two of us working on it. it. It went so much faster when she could be out there. There are just certain things in this process that takes an extra set of hands. And one of the big ones was just laying out these level lines uh, for each course of the shingles. I could do the small sections myself, but the, the broader faces were, were kind of a challenge. So we're still sort of figuring things out at this phase. I'm, I'm learning how to use the knife and uh, and I started using a block plane, which which really did a great job of, of truing up these corners. Honestly, that was the, uh, once I got the block plane tuned in well, I, th I think it's probably faster than grabbing a router every single time. Uh, and I tried the router and it just wasn't as clean. One thing that you're gonna notice is that the under course, the back course of shingles is a little bit uglier than the, the front course that goes over the top of it. And that's just, basically to save money uh they're cheaper than the than the other shingles and so we put those on first and really a lot of the work goes into that first two courses the double stack of shingles and then uh once you start uh, once you have a good foundation it's pretty quick to to start layering shingles on top of one another I was going through packs at a faster rate than expected. I did the math, I needed six of these packs, each one of them is 25 square feet, and I looked at them and I was like, how is it possible that it's gonna take this many shingles to, to cover this building? But it, it did, it took every single pack. I had a little bit extra at the end, but um, I, at one point I was worried that I was gonna actually run out. So I was slowly working my way up following the level lines that we had done. Uh, I should say that these these shingles were very consistent in their height. Some shingle packs aren't going to be that way. Uh, so you may want to use like a ledger underneath. And as you can see by this, I'm starting to get really good with the corners. Uh, by the time I was about halfway up the building, I kind of figured out how to do it and also got the, the block plane tuned in really well. have to do a little bit of math when it comes to laying out the shingles and the main thing is to make sure that they're actually going to line up perfectly with the bottoms of your windows and the tops of your doors the door was was coincidentally at the exact right height uh, the window i actually framed to the right height so that it broke down in uh, increments of five uh, but if you don't do that you can kind of uh, shift the shingles up and down a little bit just to make sure you get them laid out properly As I was getting higher and higher, I had to start cutting the shingles down. And to do that, I measured for my offset, which is, uh, or my reveal, which was five inches. And then I could just strike a line between the two points of the two by four that was in the way. Over at my workbench, I could cut that down just with a straight edge and a box knife. This, uh, this stuff kind of scores and snaps pretty easily, especially on the, the thinner side of the shingle. And so I snapped that and I actually kept that as a template uh, and then made another one. And I use that template throughout the whole process. So I can make a whole bunch of these. All I have to do is sort of measure the left-hand side and uh, line up the template. And then um, it, would, it would line up every time because the angle doesn't change throughout the, the building. Now, some of these nails are going to be seen. They're face nailed, uh, but that's just kind of the nature of it. Once you get uh, high enough up, you just have to add in some some face nail fasteners i've seen some people use staples with a staple gun but i didn't i didn't have one to use on this so this is going to have to do under the eaves it was really hard to get a nail in uh, i think in hindsight i probably would have installed the fascia board later uh but <laughs> I didn't really have that option anymore. So I tried a palm nailer, uh, which was a good option, but these these nails are pretty thin and they were prone to bending if I wasn't really careful with the palm nailer. Um, so what I actually found was this thing, I think it's called a, a machinist punch, 
Uh, I can post a link down below to where you can find one. But this was a way better way to go. You have to be careful. It takes a little time. And pre-drilling the, the pieces was super helpful. Uh, but so for speed, on, I, I needed to double up these uh, these shingles behind here to get to the right thickness. So the first course I just put in with the palm nailer and about half the nails bent. But when I was doing the final course, I pre-drilled all these pieces and then uh, and then nailed them in using the punch. I'll admit this was incredibly time consuming. Uh, this was one of those things I, I didn't expect to take nearly as long as it did. And trying to cut around the the two by four rafters that was going through and, and pre-drilling all these, making sure the spacing's right. It took a while, but in the end, I was really happy with, with how they came out. And then, of course, <laughs> there are those times where you spend a, a lot of time shaping a piece for it to just split and you have to make it again. Uh, it's just part of the process. I did find that pre-drilling the nail holes helped a ton with this, especially uh, these more uniquely shaped pieces that are time consuming. It's a lot lower risk to just put a couple pre-drilled pre holes in there and then nail them off. Lesson learned, I guess. I was trying to get the hard bits done first and the ones with like a lot of corners and a lot of uh, scribing and this window side was was just as difficult as the front side uh, just stitching everything in making sure it all lined up but that template helped a lot and just being patient with the material I had to cut some shingles multiple times to get a nice tight fit um, but when I got it it was really satisfying. So the back side of it was looking a little bit plain and you guys know me well enough to know that I can't leave that alone. If you haven't been on this channel before, I do this thing called pattern plywood where I um, mix up the end grain of, of plywood to form all these different unique patterns. And I know that people want me to put pattern plywood in the shed, although it's not going to be uh, great for the weather. So I thought this was the next best thing was to do some patterned shingles. Oh my god, I, I looked up uh, pattern, like shingle patterns and stuff, and I, I couldn't find a lot of results, but the ones that I did find were amazing, and it's got my mind going. So hopefully this is the first of, of many uh, experiments with shingles, because I just fell in love with this process. This one is about the most simple one that I found, and it's a diamond pattern. Basically, you cut the shingle uh, at, a, at an angle, going from the center to the height of your reveal. So in this case, my reveal is five inches. So that point um, starts or ends at the five inch mark. I start by nailing on the first shingle at the bottom of my diamond, and this just overlays a full course. And then I can lay out the another course on top of that uh, on either side. part of the pattern to me was this section where you taper up to the point. I wasn't really sure how to do it and my first attempt 
didn't really look right. Hmm. Did I do this wrong? So I knew that you cut a piece with a bevel on one side of it. But what I didn't realize is, is you don't want to double up your shingles underneath because you'll end up with a double stacked shingle. So basically what this does is it, it bends over the surface. Uh, and so I cut a wider piece so there was plenty of room for it to bend and then nailed it off and it worked just fine. The cool thing is that after you make that transition, they start to lay flat again. And again, it's just repeating the same uh, process all the way up. The only thing is I'm starting to get up into the eave now, so I'm cutting these, these pieces a little bit shorter. And then as I get higher and higher, the, the very top ones are gonna have to be uh, face nailed. So those get pre-drilled and you know, same deal as the other side of the building. As much as I liked the single diamond, I felt like it needed two smaller ones on either side to complete the look of it. Um, so <laughs> the weather was starting to move in, it was starting to get dark, but I stuck with it because I knew I wanted to get this thing done and I worked late into the night. The next morning I came out to install the gutter. This is the last element and I'm really excited about this actually because it's uh, it's going to be using a gutter chain, which I've never used before, but I've always wanted to find a good application for it. They're not great on houses, but it's perfect for this kind of shed and I want to direct water away from that, uh, that, that door because I, I don't want water just dripping on me while I'm uh, pulling tools in and out. So I found this, this gutter chain on Amazon. I'll put a, post a link down below to where you can find it. Um, there's a bunch of different designs for them. They all kind of work the same way where the water runs down a chain using surface temp tension. And there's, uh, like I said, a bunch of cool designs for them. So all I have to do is set in this sort of copper drain spout. And then I ask Ashley to help out again to, to hang it. Uh, now you want to hang this on an angle, obviously, an angle down towards the drain side and so it was a bit of a process but we were able to to get it uh, hung with the, the clips that were provided with the gutter. Right as I was setting this up, it started pouring rain, which is honestly perfect because I could see how well it works. That's the end of the shed build series. This was a super fun build, and honestly, I'm, I'm a little sad that it's over. Um, but if you haven't seen the rest of the build, go check out the other videos. I got a playlist right here. I've also got plans available on my website. And as always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are the best, and I'll catch you on the next one.